with us uh, Dr. Norm Clark, Associate Professor at uh, the Texas A&M uh, Industrial Distribution Program at College Station. Um, Dr. Clark specializes in sales and I was talking to Dr. Barani and Dr. Barani had high praises or a lot of big praises for Dr. Clark where he talked about every student who goes through the A&M program takes one of uh, Dr. Clark's uh, classes in terms of sales and uh, sales is a very interesting topic. So thank you for so much for joining us, Dr. Clark. Oh, it's certainly my pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you. So um, how is how do you see sales? You know, I mean, like when you talk about sales, some people say, hey, you know what, I don't want to be in a sales job. Yeah. But some people say, hey, I really want to be in sales and I love sales. So what are your thoughts there? And uh, Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I will start with, with, uh, with a little bit of a story. I, I joined the industrial distribution program in 2001, and uh, it was for, to have a sales course, and I, I came over from the business school, I was teaching a sales course in the business school, and I came over to the College of Engineering, industrial distribution specifically, to take that sales course and make it more industrial and less retail. And when I talked to people in the College of Engineering about teaching sales, there were some of them that would take two steps back and grab their wallet. <laughs> that was their that was their impression of a salesperson, and and we have that stereotype. I mean, that stereotype is out there. You think about somebody in a plaid jacket trying to sell you something that you don't need. And I ask at the beginning of the semester, I ask students, how many of you consider sales to be an honorable profession? Back in 2001, out of a class of 30, 35 people, there may be three or four hands go up. There was still a lot of skepticism, skepticism about salespeople. I ask that question today, half the hands go up. But the thing that uh, there is a difference between sales and professional sales. Uh, basically in sales, People are engaged in a transactional sale where somebody comes in with a product or a service and they start demonstrating that product or service with little or no <coughs> regard for what the potential buyer needs. And then salespeople wonder, why do I hear so many objections? The reason you're hearing the objections is because you're presenting people that people don't have, uh, prevent, presenting things that people don't have a need for. They don't see the connection. But in the, the type of sales we're talking about is a consultative sale, it's a solution-based sale. Uh, in, the, in the sales course, we teach four steps. The attention step, where when we're coming in, meeting someone for the first time, what are we gonna say during that first three to five minutes to establish some credibility and to pique enough curiosity that they will want to hear what we have to say. You know, once we get past that introductory step, then we move into the discovery step. And this is what a solution-based sales process is all about. We engage the, uh, the potential buyer uh, in a conversation, helping to understand their business, helping to understand how they make money in their business, and most importantly, working to understand what challenges that they're having that we as a company may be able to provide a solution to. So before we present anything, we have this discussion and have a good understanding of what a person is looking for from us. And at that point, we, uh, we bundle our products and services into a solution to the problems that we find in discovery. And uh, in, the sales, in the sales course, uh, whether it's an undergraduate sales course, and we do a lot of training in industry, a lot of professional development, Either way, we do a lot of role play because effective training should be designed to change behavior. And if, uh, if a person is just <clears throat> exposed to ideas and they never have an opportunity to actually do it, chances are they're never really going to use it. So I've, I have found over the years that if we can get them comfortable, get, the, get the, the students or the participants comfortable role playing the techniques that we're talking about to the extent that they become comfortable with it, 
chances are very, very good they'll actually take it out and use it. Because we're talking about really having them no longer do what they did, but having them do it the new way, and they have to have some level of comfort to be able to do it that way. No, really well said, uh, Professor. And you talked about solution selling and consultative selling. That's why I go to Home Depot, mm -hmm. because, hey, I don't know everything about the product, and mm -hmm. I'm really looking for an associate to educate me about the product and tell me if that will actually fit my room or not, mm -hmm. or how does it work. <coughs> so it's really good that you mentioned that. And sales is just not about selling, but it's about providing the solution to a customer. What role do you think digital channels play and how acute should a salesperson be on the e-commerce or the digital sales channels? Well, I think it's becoming, that's causing actually a little bit of a shift in what a, what a distributor sales organization looks like. Salespeople, for the most part, like to be in front of customers, so COVID presented some real challenges in that area. Uh, I think most people are glad that we're able to uh, to get back in front of the customer again. But the thing about e-commerce and distribution is that if a company is dealing with commodity items and they don't have an e-commerce platform, <clears throat> they're more than likely going to get left behind. I mean, because people, if the uh, we're looking at another generation, the new generation of workforce, many of these people would rather go online, do their own research, and buy online than take the time to see a salesperson. And so, the, what what I tell distributors when I'm talking to them, I mean, if you if you're playing in that arena, if you have to have an e-commerce platform in order to compete. You need to be sure that that e-commerce platform is easy to navigate and it's providing the people that come to it enough of the information that they're looking for that they're going to come back. Now one other thing about e-commerce platforms, prior to e-commerce platforms we had a lot of inside salespeople, we had a lot of customer service representatives that were taking orders off of fax machines and from emails and they were key punching all this information into a system. Well, e-commerce is paperless. There's no need for that anymore. So what are these folks going to do? What are these folks going to do? Another thing that e-commerce provides us is a ton of information. I mean, we know what, we have records of what everybody's buying. If we have a way to analyze that data and make it useful to us, we can identify trends. We can see who's buying less. We can see who's buying more. We can see which products are becoming in less demand, which products are in more demand. And so some of the, some of the um, distribution companies have taken some of their inside salespeople and some of their customer service people and, uh, and trained them in data al analytics so that they can, since they're not key punching all this stuff in, they can be mining that data and looking for useful information that they can pass along to the outside salespeople. So if outside salespeople have, them, have someone feeding them qualified leads, they have to spend less time prospecting and they can spend more time in front of customers and, pr and prospective customers. So we're seeing a little bit of a shift, a little bit of a shift. And so the customers or prospective customers who are agreeing to see outside customers are expecting these people to bring value, to be able to help them solve the problems that they have. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Clark. So as a salesperson, <clears throat> I go on the field and I meet with customers, I gain a lot of knowledge and because I meet these customers firsthand. How can I ensure that this knowledge is transferred back into the company or this knowledge gets translated into some sort of research and development for innovation? How can we ensure that cycle? Well, I think, I think you know, you guys are probably in a position to where you could, uh, you could expand on what I'm about to say, but um, in the day of uh, customer relation management system, you know, where you have a repository where, and, and I realize, uh, yeah, I've seen, you know, I, I was there when they, when 
uh, CRMs were first introduced, and salespeople saw no no value in that, very little value in that. You know, you're taking time out of the day. I could be selling, but no, I'm spending all the time putting the information in this CRM system. And 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 at that point, I mean, the management team saw some value in having all of that. But initially, there was really no value for the salesperson. I mean, it wasn't designed. They didn't have a dashboard that would give them information that was meaningful to them. And so it was kind of like a big brother thing. But, you know, this is my customer. This is my information. That's what the salesperson's thinking. And I have no incentive whatever you know, to share it with other people. I mean, you know, the, you know they may try to, to take business from me. So. But uh, I, I think they've come a long, long way. I think CRMs have come a long, long way. And uh, salespeople, they, they've been developed to the extent that salespeople see the value in that. But to your point, to, been a, to be able to get the salespeople to share that information within, even within their organization so that it can be used for forecasting, so that it can be used for research and development or, or whatever, there's there's a huge trust factor there. There's a huge trust factor. Uh, the I, I think the uh, the salespeople have to be very very well trained. I think they have to have a dashboard that's available to them, that's providing them information that helps them to make smarter decisions regarding who they're calling on and what they're working to sell these people. And if, if the salesperson can answer the question, "What's in this for me?" I think it's going to uh, the situation is going to be much better regarding the sharing of that information and throughout the organization. Yeah, trust and uh, having systems in place makes a big difference. <coughs> this has been a very insightful conversation. Thank you so much, Dr. Clark. Okay, well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.